Formative review, objective four. You can solve basic trig equations. And this is the last objective for this test. Okay, on here I've given hints. On the real test, there won't be hints. First off, you've got to make sure that you pay attention to what you're solving for. I want theta to be greater than or equal to zero, less than two pi. So you're going to do the inverse trig function to find theta but then you're going to have to find the coterminal angle or angles that fall between 0 and 2 pi. First off, cosine x plus root 3 is equal to negative cosine x. Add cosine x to both sides, and we get 2 cosine x plus root 3 equals 0. Now get cosine x by itself. To do that, you're going to subtract root 3 from both sides, then divide both sides by 2. Now, you know what cosine x is, but you want to know what, co what x is. To do that, x is equal to the inverse cosine of negative root 3 over 2. So ask yourself, which, what angle will result in negative root 3 over 2 being the cosine? Well, I look down here and I see that here's root 3 over 2, that's my first quadrant angle. But cosine is negative in quadrants 2 and 3. So quadrant 2 is going to be 5 pi over 6, and quadrant 3 is going to be 7 pi over 6. That's it. That's all there is to it. And both of those angles are between 0 and 2 pi. OK. Let's move over to the next one. 4 sine squared theta minus 3. I'm going to extract square roots. I'm going to use square roots. 4 sine squared theta is equal to 3. First, I have to get sine by itself. Then sine squared theta is equal to 3 fourths. I'm going to take the square root of both sides so that sine theta is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2. I'm looking for both the positive and the negative root 3 over 2. Well, that means that I'm in all four quadrants. Great, all four quadrants, but which family? Well, I'm here at the pi over 3 family. So I know it's going to be pi over 3, 2 pi over 3. 4 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. I just go to every single quadrant because plus and minus root 3 over 2 is going to cover all four quadrants. Next, we've got 2 cosine theta sine theta. First, get everything on the same side. So we have 2 cosine theta sine theta minus, oops, sorry, got ahead of myself there. Subtracting the cosine, we're going to get 2 cosine theta sine theta minus minus cosine theta is equal to 0. I've got a cosine and I've got cosine. I'm going to factor out my greatest common factor of cosine theta is equal, oops, is not equal, don't want the equal just yet, times 2 sine theta minus 1 is equal to 0. Now I've got this times that equals 0, so I'm going to use the zero product rule. Cosine theta is equal to 0, or 2 sine theta minus 1 is equal to 0. So Cosine theta is equal to 0, so theta, in this case, is going to be equal to the inverse cosine of 0. Over here, I'm going to find out that sine theta is equal to 1 half. So in this case, theta will be equal to the inverse sine of 1 half. And I want everything between 0 and 2 pi. Well, <clears throat> Where is cosine 
equal to zero. Well, cosine is equal to zero at pi over two and at negative and at three pi over two. So I've got pi over two and three pi over two. Where is sine equal to a half? In quadrants one and two, so it's going to be pi over six and then five pi over six. Those oops, are my three answers. Okay? All right, now I'm going to oops, do this next one. I'm going to pause, I'll turn her back up again. Over here it says factor. Well, I need factors of positive 2 that will add up to negative 3. And I'm going to need 2 sine theta and 1 and sine theta and 1. And it turns out they both need to be negative. Now, 2 sine theta minus 1 is equal to 0 and sine theta minus 1 is equal to 0. This tells me that sine theta is equal to 1 and over here sine theta is equal to positive 1 half. Sine is positive in quadrants 1 and 2. Sine is equal to 1 at pi over 2. There's only one spot where it's equal to 1. Here, I'm looking for sine. So again, I'm at pi over 6. And then in the quadrant 2, that's going to be 5 pi over 6. And then the pi over 2. And we are good. Five and six. Notice that you're using all your algebraic methods, factoring, square roots, combining like terms, and then inverse trig functions. And then you're also using your knowledge of coterminal angles. So those are the three things that are all coming together. Now here, remember before I can factor or do anything, I have to have everything alike. Oh, now I'm going to have to use my trig identities. So I recall, I recall that 1 plus tangent squared x is equal to secant squared. Minus 2 tangent squared x minus 4 equals 0. Distributing, I get 3 plus 3 tangent squared x minus 2 tangent squared x minus 4 is equal to 0. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. 3 tan squared minus 2 tan squared is 1 tan squared x. I add 1 to both sides. And tangent squared x is equal to 1. Tangent is positive in quadrants 1 and 3. This is going to be the pi over 4 family. Because root 2 over 2 over root 2 over 2. Remember we've got 1, root 3, and down here is root 3 over 3. So quadrant 1 is pi over 4. Quadrant 3 is 5 pi over 4. And those are my answers. Okay. Are those all my answers? No. Because remember this was tan x, tan squared x. So that means that tan x, sorry, I got a little ahead of myself, is plus or minus 1, which means I go all the way around. So I have to include 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4 as well to get the negative 1. Sorry about that. I was getting a little too excited. Almost done. Okay, now here I've got sine theta plus 1 is equal to cosine theta. This is not a Pythagorean identity here yet but I need to make it so that I have just one trig identity. So I'm going to first square it. That means I'm going to square this side and square this side. 
over here becomes sine squared plus, oops, I can't forget my theta, sine squared theta plus 2 sine theta plus 1 is equal to cosine squared theta. Now I can replace cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared using my Pythagorean identities. So sine squared theta plus 2 sine theta plus 1 is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. I'm going to gather my like terms, so I'm going to add sine squared to both sides. So 2 sine squared theta, and then I still have plus 2 sine theta. And if I subtract 1 from both sides, the 1's go away. Now I have a greatest common factor of sine theta, which leaves me with 2. Oops, sorry. I actually have 2 sine theta is my greatest common factor, so I take out the 2 sine theta, which leaves me with sine theta plus 1 is equal to 0. I set each one of these to 0. So 2 sine theta is equal to 0. Sine theta is equal to 0. Theta is equal to the inverse sine of 0. Over here, sine theta plus 1 is equal to 0. Sine theta is equal to negative 1. Theta is equal to the inverse sine of negative 1. All right, where is sine 0? Well, it's 0 at 0 and pi. Where is it negative 1? At 3 pi over 2. And that's it. You're done. Okay. This one, remember, you need to be able to factor combine like terms use zero product rule, okay? You need to use your trig identities and your inverse trig. There's a lot that goes into solving. Now the trig identities are going to just be, at this point, the reciprocal identities, the quotient identities, the Pythagorean identities, okay? We have not done any sum or difference angles, and we have not done any half or double angle identities. So anything that comes up like that, be careful if you're going out and you're looking online at other videos. Um, sometimes when you're, when trig equations are taught, they're taught after you've learned all your identities. Here, we're just keeping with the very basics. That's it.